five stars. Are you kidding me? Five freaking stars, maybe even six stars. Hey, how's it going? My name is Gabby. Welcome back to my channel. And today we're going to be starting on a reading vlog that is going to be a very special and different kind of reading vlog because today we're going to be reading two new release horror books in the dark. And you know, I've been really excited to read both of these books and I thought maybe reading them in the dark would make them even more scary. And so that's what we're going to do for this vlog. The first book that I'm going to be reading in this vlog is this book called William, which all I know about this is that it's a horror book about this AI robot and then like shit hits the fan. It sounds really interesting. I really do love this cover. I love like the eyes behind the door. I think it's so creepy. And then I'm also going to be reading Incidents Around the House by Josh Mallerman, which is a new release horror book that came out this summer. I've been so freaking excited to read this book, but I decided to save it for October because it's actually going to be my book troop book club pick for the month of October. The live show for this is going to be happening very soon and I will have the link down below if you would like to save the link for the live show. I am so excited to read this one because I have heard nothing but great things about this book from all of my friends who have read it. And all I know about this book is that we're following this young girl. We actually follow from the perspective of the young child and she sees this creature that she calls other mommy in her closet and so I thought reading this one in the dark would be extra creepy you know like I, I think it would be really creepy to read this in the dark so let me send you back to a couple nights ago when I started on William because I got exactly 50% of the way through William. I got to page 108 and this book is actually only about 213 pages. So it is a little bit on the shorter side, which I was not anticipating. So far, the creepiest thing about this book is the cover, sadly, because I am just not really liking this very much. I'm not gonna lie, I'm not really having a fun time. And at this point in time, I'm feeling like this book is probably gonna end up being like maybe a two star or maybe a three star if the ending improves, but I'm just not really liking this one so far. And I'm so sad about it because I had such high hopes for this. And I really thought it could be something that would scare me, but there's nothing really going on right now in the story that is scaring me. Like there's nothing interesting going on, making me feel like, ooh, reading this in the dark is just so spooky. The story is basically that we're following this man named Henry and he is this brilliant engineer who has created this AI robot that's called William. He has a lot of anxiety. He doesn't really leave his house very much. And he's married to this woman named Lily who is currently pregnant with their first baby. And then one night, which just so happens to be on Halloween night that the story is taking place, uh, Lily has some of her coworkers over. She invites these people named Davis and Paige are the two people that end up coming over to the house. And can I just say that Paige, her character is like so fucking annoying. I don't know why she reads as if she's like maybe 18 years old or maybe even younger. I don't think she's supposed to be that young. Cause I mean, Lily does own the company. So like these people that are her coworkers, like they work under her. So like the, maybe there is a chance that this girl Paige is like supposed to be written in a really young way. But she literally reads as if she's a teenager. And some of the lines she's saying, I'm like, what the fuck is that? Like, I don't know the way she just speaks is like very immature and very odd. I don't really get her character. I'm not really connecting with her character. And just all of the characters in this book in general, like they are just so one dimensional. I don't feel like I know any of these characters. The book also just kicks off like right away with, I feel like there's like little to no character development right from the start. The very first chapter and the second chapter in this book are just about, you know, Henry talking to this AI William that he's created. And the way that this AI robot like speaks to him, I'm like, is this supposed to be like creepy? I don't know. It feels like it's giving a little bit more of a camp vibe for me right now. It honestly is kind of reminding me of like that horror movie Megan where it's like you're not really like afraid of her, you know? It's like, it's more silly. That's kind of the vibe that I'm getting from this AI robot. I don't even know if the things that it's saying, like, am I supposed to be like creeped out by the things that this robot is saying or is it supposed to be read in a kind of like campy way? I don't really know. I feel like the tone of this book is kind of all over the place. Like, I don't know how I'm supposed to be feeling. Like, am I supposed to be scared because I'm not scared? And so far it's like this AI is just able to like do things like, oh, it's able to like turn off some lights or like, ooh, it locked a door or like it locked a window and like he didn't 
didn't know that it could do that. And, like it's hearing things that he didn't think that it could hear. Like, ooh, so creepy. I don't know, it's just not that scary for me. And there was nothing even like big action in the plot that even happened until around 80 pages in. That was when the first thing happened that I was like, oh, okay, like here's where the plot's gonna come in. Like this is gonna get a lot more interesting. And I do think at 100 pages in now, things are getting a little bit more interesting, but I'm just not really loving this the way that I thought I would. I want to care about what's happening to these characters, especially because, you know, Lily is pregnant. And I feel like because of those things, I'm supposed to have some kind of emotional investment in this, but I just don't right now. So I'm hoping that changes. But anyways, I think I'm gonna save the last 50% of this to read tomorrow night in the dark. Just finished reading William and like, what the fuck? That ending. The ending of this book was so good. I definitely see the hype with the ending. There was kind of like a twist that happened that I didn't see coming at all. So that was really interesting. But then that final chapter, oh my gosh. So I'm kind of torn over how I want to rate this because I do really feel like the second half of the book for the most part was still really slow. And I don't think that there was anything that creepy happening. Like I just didn't find this robot William to be that creepy. I don't know, like there was a few scenes that I guess you could consider to be kind of creepy, but I feel like I needed way more like build up and like suspense and like eerie vibes. Like it just, I don't know, in my opinion, it just wasn't explained very well or in a way that really felt like suspenseful or like creepy. And maybe it was also because I just didn't really care about the characters at all. It sucks that I didn't love this though, because I do feel like like this is one of those horror books that has so much potential. I could have seen this being a new all-time favorite if it had just done a few things differently. I mean, one, I think the characters should have been so much more fleshed out because I think the story just like starts right away and these characters are just so one-dimensional. Like I just didn't get attached to them in any way. So I didn't really care about the fate of these characters very much. And then the second thing is that even though this book is only 213 pages, I do think this would have worked better if it was like a hundred pages shorter. I think if this was like a novella length, like if it was a hundred pages shorter and the story itself was only around a hundred pages long, I think this could have been so much more effective because that ending was good. You know, like this author clearly had an idea for this story. I love the direction that the story ended up going in, but I feel like so much of this story suffers from slow pacing and like the horror in this book is just not that creepy at all. And so much of this book and the plot just revolved around like this married couple and like their married drama and like their lives. I also think that if uh, the robot, like William, was written in a more creepy way instead of like a campy way. I mean, to be fair, I don't know if this book is intended to be kind of campy or if it's intended to be kind of like, you know, creepy. Like, I don't really know what the author's intent was, but to me, it just didn't really read that creepy. Like, I expected so much more from those creepy scenes. Ugh. Ratings wise, though, I don't really know because I feel like this entire book, I was probably like thinking like, yeah, this is gonna be two stars. But then because I loved the ending as much as I did, it kind of makes me want to bump it up to a three star just because that ending was so strong. Probably end up giving this one three stars because I do think that I will read more from this author in the future. I mean, I do like the idea of reading about like an AI in horror as well, but I feel like this book, it could have taken it to much more extremes, you know, and it just didn't do that. I'm glad I decided to start with this book because that means next I get to read Incidents Around the House by Josh Mallerman. And I'm literally so excited for that one. I can't wait. Like, I feel like that one is definitely going to be a five-star prediction for me.
would be a good time to check in because I am 50% of the way through incidents around the house. I'm 186 pages in. I only have this chunk of the book left and I wanted to update you because I am absolutely going to try to finish this book tonight because I am loving it so much. You know, the great thing about, you know, filming this a little bit later in the month of October is that the sun is starting to go down very early now. The sun went down tonight around like 6.30. So I started reading this book at seven o'clock and it's only 8.30 right now and I'm halfway through. I am just really obsessed with this book. I am listening to it on audio as well. And the audiobook is so incredible because the audiobook is narrated by a little girl because this, the protagonist that we're following in this story is a young girl. And the main story that's happening in this book is that we're just following this young girl, Bella. And there's this thing that lives in her closet that's called Other Mommy. The writing style in this book is absolutely flying. Like it is very fast paced because it's all told from the perspective of this young girl. And a lot of the book and a lot of the pages are just very like spaced out like this. There have already been so many creepy descriptions about this creature thing that's called Other Mommy. She says that it like floats out of her closet or that sometimes she like slides on her belly towards the bed. Like, ew. Even trying to picture it in my head, I'm like, that is weird and disgusting. And like, what do you mean? And she says she's like really tall, like even like taller than her dad. And that she has like hair on the back of her arms. Just like some of the descriptions of this other mommy creature has just genuinely been so freaky. But I feel like Josh Mallerman is doing a great job with like writing from the perspective of a kid who's just like not really that scared. You know, like it's just something that she thinks is normal. I don't know because she thinks like other mommy is her friend and she's just kind of worried by some of the behavior of other mommy recently. Like now she's starting to think that there's something more sinister going on because now other mommy is asking her the question, can I go into your heart? And so now she's like worried because she's like, you know, I thought we were friends and now it seems like something more scary is going on. I'm just loving this so much though because I feel like there are so many great quotes already in this book with like her parents, you know, like just talking about life. Like I feel like this is one of those horror books that really touches on different fears that you had when you were a kid. You know, like just like the fear of growing up, you know, like the fear of being unhappy as an adult, like the fear of like life not working out the way that you thought it would. I love how like before she goes to bed each night, her parents will kind of like talk to her as she's falling asleep and like I don't know if she, if they think that she's asleep when they're like telling her all these things or if they think that she's still awake and listening. But I just love these conversations that like her dad keeps having with her before bed. Like the way he talks that I think the parameter for intelligence is how kind you are. And he kind of talks about how everyone in their life is going to go through something really shitty and really hard. But like the way you respond to those things really says a lot about your character and like you should always choose kindness and like to be kind to other people. I loved this moment where he like shared this story with her about like one of his co-workers doing something cruel and just thinking that he would also think the same way about it. And he said, that's real cruelty. That's world cruelty, where it's not just the idea that one person is cruel. It's that they believe and have reason to believe that the whole world feels the same. God, I just love that so much. And I love the way that her dad like talks about adulthood and how like adulthood is like the worst thing ever, but it's also like the most incredible thing ever. And anytime that he has these like dramatic experiences in life, whether they're positive or negative, he thinks about like one of his, you know, like high school friends that died at a young age because he said it's the feeling of life the experience of aging and living that's what Quinn is missing right now it's not the kid it's your reaction to the kid it's me not sleeping for the first year you were alive it's the constant worrying about you and what that does to a parent it's growth and change by way of experience and that's what he was missing. God, I just love that so much. Like Josh Mallerman truly has such an incredible way with words. I also do love reading from the perspective of a kid when she's starting to notice that there's like tension between her parents and she can't exactly like figure out what's going on in their marriage or like what's happening between them. But she can just feel like things aren't the same with her parents. And I feel like that can almost be like a whole metaphor for this like other mommy, you know, it's almost like she had to invent something maybe in her head just to cope with what she, whatever she's going through with her parents. I feel like for those reasons, this one is actually reminding me so much of Daphne by Josh Mallerman, which is a horror book that I read from him last year that I just fucking loved. Like, I loved this so much. It ended up being one of my top favorite books when I read it. And I feel like this one is a really great horror novel that touches on, like, the anxiety that you can experience when you're a young teenager and you're, like, trying to imagine the rest of your life. Trying to think about growing up and, like, figuring out what you want to do with your life is something that's really scary, you know, when you're a young teenager. And I feel like this book perfectly captured that fear and that feeling of growing up. And I feel like now reading this book, it does remind me of Daphne. Like everything that I loved about Daphne is included in this even more because we're following from the perspective of such a young kid. 
It's just very refreshing. It feels very different from anything else that I've ever read. And I'm feeling so attached to these characters. Like, I love them all so much. Like, I love the dad in this book. He's definitely one of my favorite characters. I love this little girl, Bella. She's like so innocent and so adorable. I just love her little commentary. Like, I love when she said, but it wasn't a good night. It was a mean one. And I worry that tomorrow will be even meaner. It's just so cute. Like, she's so cute and adorable. And I love the way that she thinks about the world. I just love reading from her perspective. I also think the audiobook is so well done. Like, it's literally narrated by what sounds to be like a little girl and she's doing it so well like I really do love this audiobook I think it's fantastic I'm going to finish this tonight because I'm just so obsessed with it I can't put it down it's only 8 30 at night I don't imagine it'll take me longer than like two hours to finish the rest of this so I'm gonna get a mochi from downstairs I just got some mango mochi at the store today that's my favorite ice cream like the little mango mochis oh the mango ones are the best I mean I do like a lot of different flavors of the mochi ice cream but mango is superior in my opinion opinion. I might also make a cup of tea because I'm apparently a tea person now. I just really like drinking herbal tea. You know, like it's really good for my GERD. So I like drinking tea before bed now. <laughs> but anyways, let's go get some mochi. I'll make some tea and we'll finish reading this book because it's incredible so far. It's giving me all the five star energy. Hello, I just finished reading Incidents Around the House and like five stars. Are you kidding me? Five freaking stars, maybe even six stars. If I were to give out six stars, I think I would give this six stars. I think this just launched itself into like one of my top 10 favorite books of this year. Like I loved this. <laughs> oh my God. Like, did you see me crying like a little bitch at the end of this book? Like I was not expecting to get emotional. I mean, I was thinking, you know, because I was getting so attached to these characters and just so attached to their situation and connecting with the writing that I was thinking, oh my gosh, like, is this gonna go in a direction that's gonna make me emotional? And then it did. And like, oh my God, what a fucking beautifully written story. Like Josh Mallerman. Oh my God. Like he has really just solidified himself recently as like one of my top, top, top favorite horror authors. I mean, gosh, Daphne was like a five star, like new favorite from him. And now to have this one, like back to back releases that are like God tears, just insane. Like this actually might be like my new favorite Josh Mallerman, which is just crazy because he's written so many books that I've loved. I don't even know what to to say about this book. I mean, gosh, I tabbed so many things in this book because there were so many beautifully written quotes and moments that I wanted to come back to that I just felt like were so thought provoking and just so inspiring. I don't know. I really, really loved both the mom and the dad. Like both of their characters were so interesting. They both felt so freaking real and so fleshed out. And I feel like so many people could relate to, you know, either of their situations because I feel like the dad, you know, he's very like optimistic and he wants to believe the best about the world and he wants to always have like a positive mindset on everything. Whereas like the mom is almost like the complete opposite opposite. Like she's very much, you know, like a realist. Like she gets annoyed with his optimism because she's like, we have to be real about things. And I just really loved their dynamic as a couple. And it was so interesting to read about them through the lens and the perspective of their daughter who like desperately wants them to be together and to be happy. And it was just so gorgeously written. Like there were so many scenes that like literally moved me to tears nearly. And I did cry at the end because the ending just got so emotional. But I just loved the way that these parents 
talked to their daughter. Like, I just loved how real it all felt. I loved how realistic too this whole situation felt with like, you know, when these parents are figuring out about this creature called Other Mommy that their daughter is seeing. I feel like they handled it in such a realistic way or like a way that felt very real to like how something like this would actually happen in real life. And I just loved their family. Like, I adored them so much and I was really shocked by different moments in the plot. I think the scenes with Other Mommy were so genuinely creepy. Like, they were so creepy. And the fact that I was reading it like in the dark while I was like staring at my closet, I'm not gonna lie. Like, I did close my closet door because I didn't want to be like staring into my open closet while I was reading this book. Like, that's for sure. Oh my gosh. The scenes with Other Mommy were like truly disturbing. I don't know if this book like scared me more than Daphne did because I do think Daphne, like there are a few scenes from Daphne that to this day, I still remember being like, oh my God, so creeped out. And like this one definitely had some moments too, but I don't know if this one was necessarily as scary for me as Daphne was, but I really connected even more to like the characters and the writing in this one. And this book just gave me that like very rare feeling I get when reading books that I feel like so inspired and like everything's gonna be okay. And like everything happens for a reason. And like the world is just gonna be the world and we just have to figure out how to live in it. And like nobody has the answers for everything and we're all just human beings trying our best. Like that's really the feeling that I got from reading this book and it's so rare for me to have this like amazing feeling after finishing a book like this. And that's how I know it's gonna be like a top favorite of the year for me because I know that I will not shut up about this book and that I'm gonna be pushing it on everyone. And I'm just so happy about it. I loved it so much. I really do feel though like Josh Mallerman did such a great job writing from the perspective of a young child because I feel like that's a point of view that can be really difficult to pull off. But I feel like her childhood innocence and like her wonder about the world and the way that she wants to see the beauty in things, it was just so well done. Like, I just loved her character so much. Whoever this voice actor was on the audiobook did fantastic, by the way. Like, oh my god, it was clearly a child actor, and she did so good. Like, she conveyed so much emotion and fear in her voice when it was necessary. Like, it was just so well done. I was very impressed. I feel like in some ways, too, there were some quotes in this book that kind of reminded me of the troupe in the way that they would talk about how, like, as you get older, you start to understand that the world is a certain way or you start to accept reality for what it is. And so that's why it's harder for like older adults to wrap their minds around things like monsters and goblins and like demons because all of those things are like imaginary things from your childhood that couldn't possibly be real. So like I love the idea that like a monster or something that shouldn't exist or shouldn't be possible is like harder for adults to understand and accept than it is for children because children already have these like wild imaginations, you know? And it's easier for them to accept things that they don't fully even understand yet. And I just really adore the dad's optimism in this book and the way that he speaks to his daughter. Like, I just think that they're so cute. When he says, one day, this will all be something we got through. One day, the problems you have now will be like a legend in your life. I don't know a single person who got stuck in that same problem for the rest of their life. And I feel like that's such a beautiful way of looking at any problems, you know, that you have in your life that like nothing is forever, everything is temporary. And when they kind of touched on the fact that anything that you've been afraid of before, like you you've overcome it because you're here now. I just think it's such a beautiful message and I just, oh my God, I love this book. I loved everything about it. I could literally write an entire essay about everything that I loved about this book and all the little details. I can't wait to discuss this book because this book is actually my book troop book club pick for the month of October. And so we're actually gonna be discussing this one very soon on Friday, November 1st. And so I will have a link for the live show down below if you wanna check it out and save the link because I'm so happy that another book club pick ended up going so well. Like we have another five star, like all time favorite. Like this might be my top 10 of the year. And that is just so exciting because it rarely ever happens for me. If you know my book club, it rarely ever happens that I actually get a five star. So this is a very special moment. I hope that you enjoyed it. I really did have a lot of fun reading these books in the dark, especially because more often these days, I do most of my reading like during the daytime or like the afternoon time. It is pretty rare that I dedicate a huge chunk of hours to reading at night after it's dark. And so this was very fun. And I do think that it made both of the books slightly more creepy because I was reading them in the dark at night. So you'll have to let me know if you would like to see a round two of something like this in the future with reading more books in the dark. And you'll also have to let me know if you've read either of the books that I just read in this video. Let me know what you think about them. What are your thoughts? What did you rate them? Or do you plan to read them now? Let me know that as well. And thank you so much for watching as always and I will see you very soon with another video. Bye!